Hi, I'm Lizelle Crowley and I'm at the Cool Tool Studio. I'm here to show you how to make a really fun project using delicate elements, textures, and a leaf template that's great for Halloween. Today we're going to make this spider web pendant with a tarantula in the center sitting on an aspen leaf. Let's get started. So these are the uh, tools and supplies we're going to need for this project. We're going to work with FS999 clay, and I have it stored in a hydrator that will keep it moist forever. But while we're working, I can take the clay out of the jar, put it on a tough card, and just upend the jar over, and that will keep it nice and moist while we're working. We're going to use this little um, mini mold for molding the spider. We have an antique mold that's a tarantula. We have two texture tiles. This one is called Fine Line Crackle, and I use this for a lot of things. It's going to be perfect for this project. And this one is called Waves of Paisley Embossed, and this will be for the back of the project. We've got a delicate element in the spider web, the aspen leaf template. We're going to need uh, thickness frames, tweezers, scraper, clay pick brush for lube, coil roller, and cool slip, and rolling pin. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is make the mold of the tarantula. And I'm going to take a tiny piece of FS999 and make a little ball out of it and place it right in the middle of the mold. And that's what this mini mold thing is for. It's going to allow me to press that down into the curve of the mold and get a really good impression. And I'm going to cut out the details while the clay is wet. So I'm going to use my clay pick for that. And I'm doing it right on this purple mold. So I'm cutting away the excess clay around the design. And by starting with a tiny amount of clay, I have minimal cutting that I have to do, but I do have to do some. And I am not a perfectionist. This is an organic looking project, so I'm not worrying about it being perfect. But what I will do is dry this and um, sand and refine it before I actually place it on the piece. I will reclaim all of that clay, but first I want to get the design cut out. And the clay pick is perfect for this because it can get into all the fine little nooks and crannies. Now we've got this trimmed up. It's going to be set aside to dry and um, we'll refine it before we add it to the piece. So now we're going to use this uh, delicate element texture to create the spider web. And um, actually, I'm just going to use it to this inner line. I'm not going to use it to the outer line because that's a little bit too big for the design. But it's really easy to use these. You just take some clay. And I like to kind of press it in with my coil roller first. And you want to make sure it's in all the nooks and crannies that you want to um, capture. And then you just come with your scraper and start, start to scrape it away. And see how it fills those lines perfectly? And after it's dry, it will just pop out and it will be a perfect little spider web for my design. I'm missing a couple of lines right here, so I just have to patch that up with a little more clay. and scrape that. And you just keep scraping until there's no more haze. There we go. Now, I did get some clay in here, so I'm just going to trim that off with my needle tool because I don't want that and I want to reclaim that clay. So I'm just pulling it out with my needle tool. 
super easy. And this doesn't use a lot of clay, but it makes a really beautiful um, finished design. And there, these um, delicate element textures come in a variety of shapes. And you should really look at them and, and, and come up with some ideas for your own projects because they're a lot of fun to work with. Okay, so this will be set aside to dry and then we'll go to the next step. So here we have our cute little spider that's been dried and I've just cleaned it up a little bit with a brush and water. I haven't done a lot of cleaning up. It really, um, after it's fired and everything, will look just fine. And this is the spider web and you can see how delicate this is. And if you, the best way to dry these um, delicate element textures is in a dehydrator because what happens is the clay shrinks and dries and pops right out. So it's super, super easy to release them. There's a little bit of a haze here, um, but I can clean that up with a brush. I'm not going to try to sand these because they're so delicate. And that'll just clean that little bit of a haze there. Okay, so I'm going to make the leaf now that these are going to sit on. And I'm going to use, again, this Aspen um, template. And I'm using this size leaf. And you see the spider web fits beautifully on there. And I'm going to use two fine line textures. I'm going to use this one, which is fine line crackle, for the leaf side. I want some texture in there, but I don't want the texture to fight too much with the web. So it's going to be a very fine texture on the inside. And you can really use any texture on the back that you want. I just happen to find this paisley one to be really fun. So I'm going to use this one on the back. And I, I tend to texture on both sides um, when I make a pendant. I just think it makes the back of the pendant really interesting to have a texture on it. So I'm going to uh, lube the entire texture and I'm brushing that lube into the texture using this wonderful wide brush. I have one of these in my studio dedicated to lube and one dedicated to sanding because this gets really into all the nooks and crannies of the texture. And I'm also going to lubricate this one. And the reason I lubricate the entire texture is so I don't have to be thinking about where the clay is going. I know wherever the clay goes, it's not going to stick. Because it's going to be textured on both sides, I'm going to start out five cards thick. And when you're rolling your clay, always roll all the way off the edge and keep rotating the clay. Otherwise, you'll get one long, narrow strip, and that doesn't work. And once it stops growing, you know that you've achieved the thickness. I'm going to take the larger texture face up. And this texture has a lot of interesting sections. I'm just going to pick a spot that I really like. I'm going to take my three-card frame and put it on the texture around the clay and then I'm going to lay my other texture on top. I'm actually going in this direction. And I'm going to roll in one direction with a lot of pressure. I really want to get a nice impression on both sides. Look how cool that fine line crackle is. I just love that texture. I use it for a lot of things. And then this is that embossed paisley, which also looks really cool. So I'm going to lay my clay down on a tough card. Bring in my template. Now I'm not going to really keep the stem. I'm going to add a vine after. So I'm not cutting out the stem, but I am cutting out the leaf and I'm taking my time. Following the lines of the template carefully. And 
When you're cutting, you want to feel the work surface under your needle tool, but it, you don't want it to drag too much. If it drags too much, it can cause the needle tool to vibrate. So you want to feel it sort of gliding across the work card, but you don't want to be scratching the work card. Okay. Now I'm going to um, put my little spider web on there. I'm going to generously wet the back. And this is fairly delicate, so you've got to be gentle, but it will hold up as long as you're careful. And I'm going to place it on the leaf. And because I'm generous with the water, I can slide it around a little until I get it into a position I like, and then just lightly tap it down. And for the spider, so now we're going to bond the spider. And what I want to do, because it's curved, is use a little bit of syringe. But I am going to dampen it first. And then I'm going to take my syringe. Always dab your syringe on paper towel or a sponge when you take it out of the water so water doesn't drip on your piece. The proper way to hold syringe is in your fist with your thumb on the plunger. And I'm just going to squeeze a blob of syringe in the middle. And I'm going to place this spider somewhere on the web and just push down. And that syringe will grab on to the web. So I'm going to set this aside for a final drying and then I'll attach a bale. Because it's a leaf, the bale will be like a vine and that will finish the piece. So here you see the piece has been dried. I did a light sanding around the edge. Um, and it's got a lot of depth. You can see a shadow under the spider, which is kind of cool. Um, I'm just going to attach a bale and then it'll be ready to fire. Because it's a leaf, I'm going to do a vine bale. I tend to do vine bales quite a bit anyway, but they go really well with a leaf design. I'm going to start the coil with my um, fingers. And remember, when you're rolling a coil, Always use fresh clay or freshly reconstituted clay and don't use more clay than you need. I find with my students very often they run into problems because they take way too much clay. I'm going to lightly press the um, fat side and moisten it. Get it on a tough card. Press the back of the leaf against it and you want to press down enough to make good connection but you don't want to cut through the, um, the coil. And then I'm just going to do my little decor decorative swirlies. Those are technical terms. Um, I don't want my bell quite that big, so I'm going to move it down a little. And I don't want my coil to cover the spider. So I'm going to move it over a little. And as long as you keep the coil moist, you can play with it. And I can trim that shorter too if I want, but I, I generally like a nice flowy vine look to my bale. And there we go. That'll go be set aside to dry. It'll be fired. And I will definitely put a patina on this piece to show the depth of the design. So here's the piece I made, and um, it's been fired, brushed, tumbled, patinaed, and brought to a satin finish. And I enjoyed making it so much that I made another one. Um, these are a lot of fun. I hope you enjoy making them and also thinking about incorporating um, molds and delicate elements and textures and combining them in a variety of ways to make your own unique projects. Enjoy. Visit our learning center at cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.